fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, the people from different denominations joining us in this ecumenical worship, people of other religions who are also friends and participants in our services who enjoy what we bring to the world. Welcome. I am the Most Reverend Dikai Mary. I want to thank you so much for the journey you took with us from Ash Wednesday to Palm Sunday and now we are in the Holy Week. Tomorrow, Vicky or Mary, can you tell us how tomorrow's service Thursday, April 9th, yes. is going to be like? There will be two what services. Is, there will be two services tomorrow. Yes, the service. One, the first one is 7 p.m. Central Time and 11 p.m. Central Time. Thank you very much. So the service of tomorrow, Thursday, April 9, will be at 7 p.m. Central and 11 p.m. Central. Thank you very much. You'll be able to convert that with your time zone, uh, time zone converter. You'll be able to know what that means in your local time. And then you can join us in our service. Let us pray. Lord, we always commence our services a day ahead of time. May the blessings that this Holy Week brings, the journey in the passion of Jesus Christ, may it take root in us. We are willing that you work wonders in us. We receive all the goodies and all the plenty of good things that comes with this Holy Week. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our God, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. And let us hear the reading from the Hebrews. The reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through verse be to God. The Gospel. John 13, 21 through 32. Listen to the new covenant of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, most assuredly, I speak to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was, leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples, who 
whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter, therefore, motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Then, leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him. For some thought, because Judas had the money box that Jesus had sent to him, Buy those things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Having received the piece of bread, he then went out immediately, and it was night. So, when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified. And God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What Jesus did on earth from birth to the journey of his passion, it means the various things that happened that ended up in his being not rightly judged and killed, buried, and then there was the resurrection. We are to look up to him so that we don't grow weary we are not discouraged. That's what Rosalind just read. We should not grow weary, tired, discouraged. Because of what human beings will always do. There is a side of humanity, of a, of a human being, or of human groups, of human tribes, organized groups, race, human business that is very selfish, self-seeking, and wicked. And that is why my journey on earth is to find people who are willing people that I can train, that I can impart, that I can share learning, so that they will come out of being weak, cheap, and broke. There are people who seek money and material resources in order to use it to do bad things. And there are people who seek money and material resources and position of power to do good. So there are two different kinds of people. 
on this in this planet when it comes to the use of money and material resources. There are people who seek positions of authority, leadership, power, in order to do good. And there are those who seek it for revenge. To use it to bully, to tell humanity, here am I, I am better than you. To use it to do evil. Judas received a position of a banker the keeper of money, very high position in the ministry of Jesus, in the mission of Jesus. I use the word mission than ministry. I like mission because it defines a brand. Ministry, I don't know anything about that. For example, David had a mission, Moses had a mission. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Elijah, Elisha, they all had a mission. And all of them actually had a place where they meet with God, a chapel, a shrine like we have here. And what they did in that quiet little corner become a world phenomenon. Each of the people in the Bible, the good ones, used the position of power and greatness for good. Jesus used his position as a rabbi, a teacher of the law, although different from the Jewish one, his was with a Pentecostal experience. His was with the rightly administration of the sacrament of the word. If the word of God is not a sacrament, I don't know what then is a sacrament. If you yourself, like Jesus, you are not God's sacrament on the earth, then I wonder who you are. I embodies Jesus in human form. So you are also. You represent him. And not just represent him. You are like him. His presence dwells in you. So Jesus was a rabbi, a teacher. He was also a miracle worker. A prophet that saw the past, the present, and the future. There is judgment for everyone who desires God's business, but for the wrong reason. There is, there is a very wicked judgment that will come upon every human being who desires God's business and who is on earth, God's earth, for the wrong reason. Who desires leadership and mission work and whatever kind of human existence for the wrong reason. Jesus did everything for the right reason. To help human beings and advance God's creative entrepreneurship upon the little village called planet Earth. Expansion of a person for the totality of that person's well-being was the mission of Jesus and is still the mission of Jesus. Let me tell you, the mission of Jesus has never ended. It's only beginning because there is much more that we've not seen. I cannot wait 
when I will touch your hand and out of your hand money will just emerge. I can't wait when I will touch your neck and a gold chain will emerge. I'm talking of the phenomena. Yeah. I cannot wait for when I will call you and tell you how much you have in your bank account. If you lie, you don't get no miracle. And you tell me I have 20,000 right now in my savings and 10,000 in my checking. And I will tell you in your checking tomorrow morning, you will have 100,000 US dollars. Because we use money and position of power. That's how God trained me to know how real you are, whether you are fake or whether you are real. Because when it comes to money, people begin to lie. They begin to become smart. So they think. And you don't know that one little thing can wipe away everything you have. One little thing can take your very life. People, people don't learn no lesson. I don't know why. It's because that's how human beings are wired. You have to be aware of this. Do not be discouraged because of the other side of how human beings do things. Go on the right side. It doesn't mean that because there are wicked people on the earth that there are not many good people. Your job is to mingle and to do business with the good people. That's your job. I'll give you an example. I have a group of technicians around the world who are working on my social media, on YouTube, and different, different stuff out there. People were bidding for for my for my for my business. They were bidding for it, like auction. Um, bidding, bidding me, not auction here. Bidding means who who I put out a I put out a budget, and then I see who gives me the best quote. That's what I mean. I pick a guy. He delayed and delayed for the last two days. I have to go to the company that I'm using. I say cancel the order, and I told them why. And that's like put a stigma on his name. And all this time I didn't know that the guy from Bangladesh that is working for me is also an expert in that area. So I began to talk to him on a text message and he said, yeah, I have a diff another platform. Take a look. I do this, I do this, I said, okay. Go into my this, go into my that. I give you permission. Go this, go there, go there. Look at this and tell me what do I need. To, what what do we need to do? He said, "Wow, that's my area also. It's all right. Send me a quote." And he did, and I said, "I'll take it. Send it to the company." And he did. It didn't take us five minutes. What has been going on for two days of one idiot try, trying to, I mean, you send the person a, text, a, a message and it will take like the next day to reach. I mean, I couldn't take that. So tell them, cancel it. What you need is a fast vehicle to do things. There are many people who are looking for your, for the job that you want to give them. There are people there who are professional. Give it to them. One, two, three. They are on it. Others just want to play. And that's how the world is. Your job is to find the best who are willing. The coalition of the willing. Because I am... I told all of you that beginning in 2020, I will only use professionals for what I do. So if you are not a professional in what I want, you will not be called to do things for me. 
you have to be good at your game. Including the church things that we do. You have to be great in your reading. You have to be professional in your speaking. You have to be great in the way you, you do things. Because the world is going to get the best from us from now on. How many of you knows what is written on our YouTube channel? What does it say? When you open our YouTube page, what does it say? Those of you on the line, tell me. Okay, go ahead. What does it say? It says money is power. Did you open it to look at it? <laughs> No, no, no. Okay. I, I remember. Okay. Money is power. You know why that is there? The Holy Spirit told me a few days ago. He said, put it there. And he said this. Many people out there are hiding in churches and are hiding in temples and are hiding in mosques and are hiding in in shrines, they are hiding in synagogues to feel safe. They are hiding there. In order to comfort themselves from their failures. They are hiding there because they are afraid of becoming somebody. They are hiding there. They are going to Bible studies. They are going for every prayer meeting. They are going to every convention and conferences and crusades. Because they have nothing to offer to the world. Look at the scientists. Look at them sleepless nights. They are working on vaccines to solve human problems. And the rest of the people are praying. And your prayer is never going to solve the human problems here. They are problems that are for prayers and they are problems that are not for prayers. You have to be aware of this because they've lied to you over and over and over that you need to hear God's word, you need prayer, you need fasting, you need to pay your tithe and all will be alright. And here comes another man from God which is me, the most reverend in the Chimera. And I'm telling you, that is a wrong teaching. Because they are keeping you there for votes, or they are keeping you there for the little change they get from you. I can tell you just a few number of people around the world who love me for who I am as a person, and not because of what I do. And I know those who love me because of what I produce for them. And I know those who also don't, and those who are grudgingly following or grudgingly giving. And I want to reach a place where I am so rich that I can tell them, stop, I don't need your money. I don't need your nickel and dime. Why? Because I'm bigger than that. Because the money you give me the gift you give to me, what you buy and send to me, reveals disrespect or reveals great honor. People call me to give me an excuse why they couldn't. Somebody called me, oh, I'm sending you a hundred dollars. While I was broadcasting. So, all right. Go ahead, mama. This woman has received so much miracles from me, it's unreal. And has received so much financial miracles, I've never called her for one day to ask her to send me a penny. But she called out of shame, out of guilt. Nothing came. I was playing the ministry voicemail and the business voicemail. Oh, yeah, I promised to send you a hundred dollars. And uh, I didn't do it. Uh, it was because of I just click delete. I deleted it. I don't want to listen to such a thing. I 
I want from now on to run with a billion dollar, billions of dollars business God has given to me. That's what I want to run with. I want to focus just on it. Because I want to start to get religious folks from Christianity, Muslims, Baha'is, you know, Hindus, Buddhists, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, all these different religious groups. When they come to me, I want to reveal what is possible that they can do to be happy. Because the most unhappy people on earth are religious folks. People who constantly want prayer or are seeking God. The Holy Spirit told me that one of the reasons people seek God is because they are afraid to die. Next, they are afraid of somebody killing them. Those are the two main reasons. They are afraid that death will just come and take them. They will go to bed and never wake up. Next, they are afraid that somebody will attack and kill them through bad powers or through physical brutality. People are very much afraid. They are driven by fear. They are seeking God because they don't want to go to hell. They are afraid of hell. And that's why they can't follow God rightly because their motive for coming to God in the first place is not right. They come because of fear. They're fearing hell. I didn't come to Jesus because I'm afraid of hell. I didn't come to him because I didn't have money. I didn't even know the use of money when I became a priest. I didn't know. I didn't know what politics was. A lot of my, my colleagues went to their godfathers and godmothers and their people and told them to go and pay money to the headquarter to be posted to better places, better churches where there was money. I didn't, I was so naive, I didn't know this. Focus. Jesus endured the, the, the word there is endured such wickedness, such torture, brutality from humans. And it was part of him being a sacrifice for us. Now, you can do a lot with what he did. What he did is like it, it is something that you can extract to build whatever you want. What he did, what he endured, you can extract it. You can say, God the Father, I come and I extract from what Jesus has done to get this, to get this, to be this, to be this, and I ask that you perfect my requests better than I've asked in the name of the same Jesus who is my Redeemer and my God and my King and also my very flesh and blood. Amen. That's how you pray. One encounter, one, one mission gave back to every good thing you ever wanted. It also gives you courage to endure because there is a path of seeking happiness that in that involves a lot of torture long hours since the past two weeks i've been sleeping for like two or three hours why because if you are going to become great there is a time that you're gonna pay that price whether you like it or not it's not a time for people to, to say, oh, I pity you. Oh, you have no sleep. Uh -uh. You have to pay that price. You must pay that price. If you don't pay that price, it's not going to work. Money will never come to anyone who is not willing to work for money. Or to work with money. Money will not. Whether you like it or not, it won't.
Jesus was willing to pay price. What price are you willing to pay? You are not even asked to pay price for the world like I'm doing for you. What business are you willing to pick up and focus on it? Do this first thing, do the second thing, do the third thing, do the fourth thing, and you are on. My job is not to handle too many things anymore. Just to pick. I am this brand, and I'm just focusing on the brand that works. That's what we are talking about. On your way to success, people are going to discourage you. People are going to try to make a mess of you. People are going to stop you, to try to stop you. Focus, for that's what Jesus did. Your body wants to relax. Your body wants to enjoy. Your body wants the easy way out. I am talking to my partners who are in my circle of success. Vicky, write that down for me and Mary. Circle of success. It's a group that I'm going to pick. It's a mixture that is going to be called a name. The circle of success. Because we can no longer pretend like everything is all right for us or with us. You must enter into the circle of success. Please do not call me to ask me about it because I won't talk about it. Just like the BMC, the circle of success, you don't know who belongs, you don't know who don't unless you hear about the conference of that group. Just like the BMC, you will not be able to be allowed to know who belongs or who don't, or even when they meet. Because you can pray all you want to pray, fast all you want to fast, hear all the messages from all the preachers, all all the mams, all the, all the babas, all the swamis like me. It won't do you any good unless you are focused on what you want to achieve on the earth and you put all of your passion into it. Jesus put all his passion into it and never allowed, even though he quarreled with them, it wasn't easy selling. He quarreled with them, he cursed them out he damned them. He judged them. Yet, he knew where he was going and what he wanted to achieve. And that is the journey that begins now. Begin that journey now. Don't delay it. Because if suddenly you are leaving this earth, you are going to be a very, very bitter person. You are going to be full of hurt. Why? Because there is a lot that you did not achieve. Stop arguing and start action. I am not coming to be talking to you about these kind of things. I'm not willing to lead people who are not willing to ask the right questions and are willing to put the right action. The reason why I want all the money that I can get in the world so that my name is there in the list of millionaires and billionaires is so that people will listen to me when I speak. Because when you are starting something, people won't listen to you. But when you become something, people will. That's how the world operates. When Obama wrote his book, 
dreams of my fathers, just very tiny, very tiny numbers. But when he became president, he was now socially successful, socially relevant. Everybody went and bought it. And that's what I'm aiming at. Someone can have nothing to give to the world, but if he or she has people who makes him or her socially relevant, who recommend him or her to the public, the trash that they sing, or the trash that they write, or the trash that they, they do, your comedies will now become socially relevant, even though it is pure trash. Every human being is recommended by another human being to become great. So I'm looking for those who will recommend me. In a situation in which there is no one to recommend you and I, then you have to put your own crown on your own head, like Napoleon did. All the great leaders of the world, whether they were crowned or not, they have something inside them. They crown themselves first. Are you willing to crown yourself first? Don't deceive yourself when you say to yourself, I crown myself. I now have, I now have a crown on my head. Like when I see a gathering of conferences, you see some people wearing a real crown. Men and women, I've seen it. You look at their bank account, they have nothing. Everything they own is owned by the bank. They have no business. If you don't have a business, you are a nobody. You are just a follower. If you don't have a mission, that you are focusing on, then you are nobody. Unless you found a leader like me and you bring your mission or your business under mine and we are working together, that's different. That's why people like Mary and Victoria, they make me happy. I asked Vicky, what's your business? She said, I don't have any. I can't think of anything. It is your business that I'm, that is mine. <laughs> I like honest answers. I said, okay. Join me. Fall in line. Let's go. And from that moment, this girl began to have financial prosperity. I'm not talking of money I give to her. Money began to come to her from north, south, east, and west. One month after she made her confession, everything about her life changed. I was shocked when I saw it. If you see Victoria nowadays, you don't know that that is Victoria. If I pick three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten women and put them and say, go and pick Victoria, you won't be able to pick her. Because of beauty, money, wealth she now drips with jewelries she drips with good stuff and people now listen to her go and see how mary lives i asked her what do you want to do in life she said tell me and i like such honest answer so, all right, join me, let's go. She joined my wagon. And the angels and the Holy Ghost have been taking her to places that she didn't dream of. Mary is one of the wealthiest women in our ministry. I'm now making it known to all of you. Whether you believe or that's what it is. She's one of the wealthiest women. 
Go and see the type of cars she drives. Or the kind of lifestyle she lives. Nancy's life changed. Just like that. Diane and Lucky's life changed. Just like that. Vivian's life changed. Just like that. Why? They are willing to do things differently. Rosalind's life changed. Samantha's changed. It's very rare for you to see people who come to me with a good intention who do not have a change happening to them. Why? Hallelujah. Because they have to focus. It's true. It's true. Everything you said is true. It's true. It's true. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I picked a guy, a poor lawyer. And I said to him, you have to become Go to the, I think, go to the House of Representatives or Senate. I can't remember which one is which. You are going there. Say, say, how can I go there? I said, don't ask me how. But you are going there. You are. Whether whether you like it or not, I have been told that you should become, you should become, one of those to make laws, to help the society. And he did told him, leave this political party, leave the Democrats, go to the Republicans. Another one I told, leave the Democrats and leave the Republicans, go to the Democrats. It all work out for them all. Told them, when you go there, be quiet. Don't join them in what they are doing. Do what your conscience tells you. Both of them now are very rich. Why? They listen to my voice. I ask the Almighty God to take care of you, keep you safe. If you are doing all that they ask you to do concerning the corona virus and you are still afraid, send me a money order, a check or go to PayPal and put in between a hundred to two hundred dollars and ask me to make your special oil that you're gonna, you're gonna carry with you. Make sure if they have asked you to take any medication, take the medication. If they want, if the if they, if they vaccine comes out, go and take. I want all my partners should go and take the, va the vaccine so that you are safe and protected. Don't follow those people who think that they are higher and better Christians. Leave them because they are the ones who will die off. And God will still be there and faith that they think they have will still be there, but they will be long dead. They say that, <laughs> they say that it, a, a living, a, a living chihuahua, you know, those little dogs, a chihuahua that is alive is better than a mighty dead lion. Is that not true? <laughs> A little tiny dog that is alive, hopping about doing things, is far more better than a dead li a dead lion laying down there, and the buzzard are, are poking at his head and eating eating it up. So let those who think that they are tough lion and lionesses of faith, let them let them not take care of themselves medically, because they will become dead lions and dead lionesses. And you will still be here enjoying life up to the age of a hundred and something and you will finish all that you want to finish and you are happy when you are living because you take a look at you take a look and see all that you've achieved when you see your name written on a tall buildings tell me how you will feel 
Tell me how you're going to feel when you see a medical center and it has your name on it. Let people comfort themselves with false comfort and false faith and religions. You, you are a combination of true religion, true spiritual practice, true relationship with Jesus, and the quest for human happiness. People who go to the club are far more happier than people who go to church to worship God. I can, I can tell you all of that. I can bet on that over, over my grandfather's grave. I can bet on that one. Those who go to the clubs on Fridays, Saturdays, those two days, are far more happy people than those who come to the church. People come to the church as though it's a dead thing. People go to the mosque as though it's a dead thing. People go to the synagogue, to the shrine and temples and all these places as though they are gods and goddesses. Of course, ours is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You think he's dead? The worship of God is a fun thing. We only put up this tradition, we only put up these traditions and all of that just for order, just for accountability, just to do it well so that nobody will go out of hand. But still, in between, you are doing what God wants you to do. People go to the club, the music is blasting. They are happy. They are dancing. They are rejoicing. They are having a good time. They forgot about all their problems. They are smoking, having sex, drinking all kind of alcohol. Go back with the headache. They don't even mind the headache anymore. Because the happiness, the entertainment that they got is enough for them. Why do, we, why do people go to the clubs? And have a good time and then you come to the church it's a place where you come to 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 hide that's what the holy ghost told me a few days ago people go to the church to go and hide and they go back home sick tired poor broke cheap weak for other people to use them and keep you in a place that you don't belong when are you going to change? They try to keep Jesus where he doesn't belong. And he refused to. And that was the war between him and them. He said it's the same religion. But my interpretation of it is it must be as human as possible. Because God needs humans to play God on the earth. Please write that down. God needs good humans to play God on the earth. When are you going to change? I have spoken to you that during this corona, if you don't have food, you tell us, we'll package food. We will, we will tell the companies we work with. We will buy and ship to you. What do you lack? Tell us. If you are a partner in good standing, we are not talking about people who just walk through the door. That's what church is about. It's about dancing. You go to churches, there is no dancing, there is no music, nothing. That's why I like I like my Roman Catholic fellow pastors who is like to hell with this. They brought the mariachi band and asked them to come and blow that thing in the church. <laughs> Bring it from the club and blow the mariachi right there in the church. Stop the tradition. For, for a while, let's, let's enjoy our lives here. God is here. God is here. And you see elderly men and women that remind them of the good old days when they used to party 
and you will see an elderly woman and man rise up in the church and start to shake it out there and roll it. Roll it the Latino way for me. And I love it. Just that word mariachi dance and music in the church solved a lot of people's problems. <laughs> boom, 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 pa, da, 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 pa, pa, da, da, pa, 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 da, 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 pa, 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 boom, 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 I love it. <laughs> I told them you guys are lucky that I'm not in your church because I'll be the first to come from the. I will. I will shake it and swing it and gyrate from the altar into the congregation and back and forth until everybody are standing up and having fun until angels come in until angels come in and start to shake their butt all over the place and put all of us to shame <laughs> yep put all of us human to shame even cows are asking me to teach them how to dance. How much more you? <laughs> yeah, I've already taught Lizzie how to dance. She can dance at least a little bit. Don't worry about me. I have put alcohol on her already. So Indian people, bye. <laughs> Lizzie return not guaranteed. <laughs> it's not guaranteed. I've already put that holy alcohol on Nancy. They say white folks don't dance. Are you kidding me? She now can dance. Ooh -wee. Zola is already ahead of time. I gave her alcohol since she came to Atlanta. <laughs> Vicky, I gave Vicky Holy Ghost alcohol since she came to Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it is. Mm -hmm. Anne of Norway is already Anne is at in, in the front of the church club. She's in front to collect the ticket and the money. Oh, Anne of Norway, while you're walking in, she's already shaking it out. Woo! She's on. I like that. Yep. Mary is already out there. She's right there in the midst of the church club. Beckoning for them to come right in because it's happening. <laughs> Seriously. I didn't know that Vivian was a great dancer until the Holy Ghost showed me and I told her about it. So this is going to be great. <laughs> it is going to be great today. Jesus Christ is already here. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is already in the club. Diane already has, Diane already has taken her throne because she's a great dancer. She and Lucky, they are. And I love those. I love my family. They are great people. Also, I want you to take life easy. Many of you, because of your fear, because of what has happened to you, you are taking life too hard. Everywhere you go, you are seeing war. Whatsoever somebody is telling you, you are seeing war. You are interpreting, are they against me? Are they for me? That's not how you are going to enjoy life. You are going to die before your time. And I will repeat what I said last Sunday. I will repeat it again. Stop spending your time and your life with pain givers. Anybody you suspect is a pain giver, leave them. Because I have asked God that if not, if he's not going to give you the gift of discernment of spirit, 
He should at least give you the gift of suspicion. <laughs> You should get it. Life is too good to be wasted. Please write it down for me. It's a powerful key. Life is too good to be wasted. By the way, Ray Ray, I saw your video on my Instagram. I saw you making those beautiful soap and wrapping them. Please, if you want to buy any any nice soap for you to 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 use things for your bathroom for good nice luxurious bath please contact me so that i connect you with ray ray's website for you to go and buy stuff there if you are already following me on instagram you'll see a video there she's also on my messenger you the car a email facebook she's there Okay. Thank you, Bishop. Yep. You see the one that says R, capital R A. That's Ray. That's that beautiful girl. I don't. I don't like people calling her female. Well, a well, woman. She's a woman. Are you serious? She's either either a female is a girl or she's a lady. <laughs> Why do you need to call a woman who is 80, 70, 90 year old, you are calling her uh, an old woman? Seriously? That's so rude and so crude. She's a girl. She's a lady. That's why when you hear me in professional place, when I'm talking to women, you hear me say, when they ask me a question, I will say, yes, my lady. That's the way I approach them. Yes, my lady. And I will fold my hand and I will do a little bow. Yes, my lady. It's about time that you be happy. And I have already told you, being a Christian, receiving Jesus, being baptized in the Holy Ghost, gives you a guarantee that you are now, you have it going with God. The ticket is on. And now, what you are going to use that relationship to make is a different thing altogether. What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with all this drama that we are, we are about to begin tomorrow to do? Till Easter. And then we start the festival of spring on Monday. What do you want to do with all this drama of Christianity, which is simply a reenactment of what has happened? It's just a reminder that these things did happen in human history. Become part of it. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to turn your new name, a born-again Christian, spirit-filled Christian, what are you going to do with that new, new level? new nomenclature that is attached to your name what are you gonna do with it if you do nothing with it then you are going to be cheap weak and broke even though you have jesus it's not a guaranteed that you can be happy even though you go to the church and the mosque and the synagogues and the shrine and the temples is not a guarantee that you are going to be happy on the earth. It does not guarantee you that. The only thing that will guarantee you happiness is money and the accumulation of wealth, period. Why? Because the Holy Ghost told me that the church 99.5% of the, every church you can think of is filled with sad people who have no future. Write it down. Write it down. If I were you, I'll write it down. The church is filled with sad people who have no future. And that is why I am different. If you own a business, I want to come and promote you. But 
don't become like other people whom you have a little business and I want to come alongside you and you want to play that you know more, you, you are smart. That's why if I loan you money, you are going to sign all kinds of papers with the lawyers and me and the bank. And all the information from social to drivers will all be there. When I need that money, I need it. If not, I'll throw, I'll throw your butt in jail, big time. Because this is not a Christian thing. This is a happy thing. We are not joking. I want you to be happy. And your happiness is guaranteed only by the money you have and the investment that you've done with that money. Some people want to comfort themselves with, oh, I've invested my time in a marriage, my time with kids. I've invested my life in education. I've worked for government. I've, have you worked for you? That's the question. What are you doing for you? And you can't answer it. I ask God Almighty not to allow, uh, not to allow the words that I've spoken to you to be in vain. I am asking God to find me. A lot of people. I am revisiting how many people I'm asking God to give to me to become millionaires and billionaires. That's what I'm working on right now. The number of people I want that I think I can handle. So that I can raise them to become these people. And they are going to be people who are going to be loyal to me. Not people who come to receive and go up at that stage. Where I come to invest in people who cannot invest in me. Those days are over. Anybody who is not coming to invest in me personally. And in, in my mission and in our business. I don't need you. You can just be a member. That's it. Because nothing goes for nothing. People will call me to pray for them and they will tell me they have no money. Seriously, you have no money. And yet, if your son or daughter, your husband or wife, if they have problems with another human being, you will go and find a lawyer. You have money to pay the lawyer. Where did that money come from? You don't have money, but you have money to go to the club. You have money to do a thousand dollar hair gear. You have money to buy new clothes, to go to church, to show off birthday, marriage, all these anniversaries. That sometimes you don't even need it. I've even seen people dress up and celebrate that somebody came back from jail. Where that all of you should be ashamed of yourself in the first place. And treat it quietly and begin to make that child or that man or woman to go and start looking for a job. Instead you go to celebrate somebody came back from jail. It's not that somebody came back from college with a first degree or a master's or a PhD. Or somebody went and did a one year, a two, a two years technical program and come out with technical knowledge. And then we celebrate that and then the person go and get a job. You're going to celebrate somebody coming out of jail. You must be out of your mind. People, people, people think that because I'm a pastor, I'm a priest. So they, they want me to come to their children, jail coming out of jail ceremony. I don't go to such rubbish. It's a wasting of my time. I ask God to make you smart. I ask God to change your mind. I ask you to see things different from the way you were brought up. I want a change to happen to you that will bring about such a force in your life 
like you've never seen it. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you. Because sometimes when I talk to a lot of people around the world, many of them think that I don't know what I'm talking about. That I'm just a common priest. And they do not remember how many years it takes us to go through college and universities to become what we are. And they don't remember that even while we are doing that, many of us, we branch off to become professors, to become lecturers in colleges like I was. I was the head of a department of history. So my life is not limited to Bible. Because some people just see me as, oh, this Bible guy, this evangelical guy, this reform guy, this Pentecostal archbishop. You are, you are wasting your time if that's how you perceive me. Because you will not be able to enjoy me if that's all you see. Because many of you should be able to know that I'm a trained chaplain, medical chaplain. In cardio coronary and cardiac rehab, in gerontology, I work with people with dementia and Alzheimer. I'm trained in that. In a hospital, not on computer. I lived in a hospital for two years to be trained in how to do that. ER, neuropsychiatry, and, and, and providing medical chaplaincy care to people who are dealing with oncology. That's cancer. And I did not want to be continually overwhelmed by people dying suddenly. I went and took a course in how to deal in hospice care. How to set up different, different things that will help people. Whether from shelters, abuse women, all kind of stuff. And then you also forgot that I own a business that is an umbrella for six different businesses. You forgot that. So when I talk to you, you listen. BBC the other day where we're talking about the war. Many of you do not really know what is the war between America and China. What is the war between Trump, our president, and the government of, of China? Why does he not like China? Because China is a threat to our laziness. China got what we don't have. You see, America was the one that brought about 4G. America did. America was in, front, in, forf in forefront of 4G technology. They are the owners of it. China licked their wound and went home and started working on 5G. And they overtook America. I want you to get the truth about everything. 5G has nothing to do with coronavirus. 5G has nothing to do with any form of sickness on the earth. 5G has nothing to do with radiation. Nothing. A file that will take you 10 hours to download will take you 3 seconds to download with 5G. It connects the whole world faster than we've ever been. In everything, computer, airplane, spacecraft, new kinds of new kinds of trains. Like we have Amtrak train. New worms are out there now that are gonna be running. 5G is going to cut across everything in technology. And Bill Gates has been warning America since 2015. Get on board on this thing. Work on it fast. Fast. Before China overtake us in this. Especially Huawei. 
Because remember that every business you own, every major business in China, the government will go into partnership with you also. I hope you know this. They are government. <laughs> if you have the brain, Chinese government will give you money for you to do what you do good. They have two point something billion people. The land mass they have is huge. It's like two, three continents put together. They have a big land. They have two point something billion human beings. Huge army. You want 10,000 engineers certified who knows what they are doing. China will give it to you in one minute. They are there. And the whole world bought into the alcohol of China. China gave it to everybody. They drank and ate and went to bed while they, they kept walking. And we handed over our industries, our technology. We handed it all to China to build in their own land so that we become dependent nations. Most of the nations of the world, 90% of every nation or more, we can even say 99% of every nation on earth today, China is mama. They all depend on mama China. From food, to agricultural things, to technology, to medicine that we are taking in, to medical things, medical equipment, car parts, name it, China will give it to you. They got it. We handed it over to them a long time ago. Every nation handed it over to them. And nations of the world who did not like the European nations coming to colonize them and left them with nothing. They all went to Mama China. And China will come, even if you are poor and broke, China will come to your nation and build whatever you want them to build for you. They will come and build it for you. And you will pay them little by little, which means you're going to be a slave to them forever. That's why a lot of countries are slave to China. We don't have toilet papers on our, on wall, uh, at Walmart. No paper towels. No cleaning equipment, no cleaning things, no detergent, all these have vanished. Why? Because China got hit with a virus and they can't produce. The ships are not on the water. Don't let anybody lie to you. What I'm telling you is the real thing. If I was still teaching in college, this is what I would be teaching my college students. You have to be aware of this. And don't follow what people are sending to you talking about radiation, Bill Gates did this, Bill Gates. When you become rich, people will criticize you. Don't worry about their criticism as long as you're rich. Be rich. Shanti, are you listening? Good. Don't worry about what people are saying about you. Go ahead and do what you got to do. Mary, do you get it? Yes, please, I got it. Good. Become rich like Bill Gates and shut up. Become rich like Warren Buffett and shut up. This, I'm talking of people who worked hard for their riches. They didn't need to cheat anybody. They didn't need to kill anybody to make their money. They used their brain to manufacture products that we can see. And we are using it. Thank you. Amen. When once you become somebody, people want to criticize you. People want to hit you with sex scams. People want to hit you with money scams. Be ready to defend what you've worked hard for. Because there are people who are like hyenas waiting for the rhinoceros to kill something for them and they come and eat for free. They didn't work for it. People want some days you become rich and then they come and scandalize your name. And they are now putting bail. What has Bill Gates got to do with coronavirus? 
He's not the champion of 5G. 5G is being is something that uh, is, is uh, China is ahead of that technology. And America doesn't like that China is the one ahead of it. That's why you see all this manipulation and conspiracy theory about 5G. Some years back it was Y2K. Nothing. Oh, the year 2000, everything gonna end. It is gonna, the computer will shut down and everybody run on that. Did anything shut down? No. 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 Now it's 5G. Because everything that does not fit the agenda of some people, they start to fight it. Elon Musk and his group want to build high speed real high speed train in America. And they don't want it. Why? Because if he built it, he will put Amtrak train and all these other freight train, he will put them out of business. Yeah. That's why I like Steve Jobs. He came and put Sony out of business with their cassette and brought about iPod. I do a lot with my iPad when I'm not on my computer. I do a lot on it, thanks to Apple. If somebody has beaten you in a particular thing, no, just, just, just go behind them and walk with them. And not go through all this conspiracy theory of radiation, cosmic rays, all those nonsense. Of what good is it doing to you? Because whether you like it or not, China is ahead of the world right now. You better believe it. China is ahead of the world. Until we will be able to have good people, both Democrat and Republican good people in the Senate, in the House, in, in, in the White House, will be able to have some good people with good brain who listen to professionals. And we will get back into, we, we will now begin to give uh, Northern California, where I used to live, the Silicon Valley will begin to back them up 100%. Because the concentration of human brain is there. And China is coming there to tap into what we already have here in this country. Obama wanted us to go into the green technology. Everybody were like, no, 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 no. This, that. He want to kill coal. Go and look at the person who promised that he's bringing back the coal industry. Go and see. Go and see how much coal is coming out. <laughs> the people of West Virginia are so pissed. There are people who want it easy. I want to work. And I want to put people back to work. That's what my ministry is about. I want to help businesses and we mean it. We don't just want to talk about it. I want to give people jobs. That's why the Diamond Gold Mine Incorporation, uh, Corporation, which I own, part of what we do is referral services. They are about to begin working on that as a separate website. You go to you go to Kansas.gov and you look me up. You will see. If you type in the Kai Mary Consultancy Group, which we used to have, you will see it is now Diamond Gold Mine Corporation. And you can see what we do there. Six different things, services we provide. I don't want to be pastors who just build churches. One thing will happen, everybody will flee from that church. One earthquake, everything goes. One hurricane. Build while you are building this kind of thing for people to gather, the main thing you need is to build businesses, build hotels, build casinos, buy liquor stores. You don't hear pastors talking about that. Because it's not holy. Seriously, I should allow the devil to get the money. Huh? You think I'm stupid? The devil should get the money from tobacco and from alcohol. Seriously? The only thing I will not allow me and my group to sell. We are not going to sell no no button. We are not going to sell uh, what do we call it? 
we are not going to make money through prostitution or through drug drugs. We're not going to give people drugs and get money from them. I, I, I believe it's wrong for anybody to pimp women or men and to give people drugs for them to die and to go to jail and to ruin families and individuals. And I don't want to see anybody abuse or molest children. That, those three things, people get into trouble with me. I'm very fanatical when it comes to those things. I don't want anybody to go into those businesses. Because it's wrong. But what about hair saloons, nail bars, hair product, I'm for it. Do you know how much money people spend on alcohol and tobacco product? I mean legal ones. A lot of money. A lot of money. Do you know how much money people spend on coffee and, and tea? Daily. Ice cream. Bubble gums. Come on. I want to have shops where people can buy what they want. Except those three things that I've told you. That's what I want to be remembered for. I don't want to be remembered for my books. Because soon, after people will read it, they will dump it, put it in their bookshelf, end up in a second-hand store. That's what we do to books. So that's not going to help me. But the institutions that I'm going to build, the clinics, the medical center, the men and women that I loan money for them to do businesses, legal businesses. The medical research, the pharmacy that I have, the big pharmacies that I will build, those are the things that I will be remembered for because my names will be on them, the name of our business. And you check up our business, you know who is the owner. Those are the things the world will remember you for. I went and looked up T.L. Osborne. Nobody really remembered him. Kenneth Hagen, nobody really remembered him. Aura Robert is only remembered because of Aura Robert University. If Benny Hinn is not there, T.B. Joshua, John Hagee, Paula White, T.D. Jax, Creflo Dollar, they won't be remembered after few years of, the, of they have not been there. Because there is nothing really that says they were here. Including the Copelands. There will be nothing that you can say, that's it right there. The Egyptians built pyramids. That's how we know that they were there. My job is to train you and put your name on something. That's what I want. Whether others like it or not, I want to put your name on something. Trump is not stupid. He put his name on every building of his. And as long as those buildings still stand, his name will be there. My job for you if you did not know why you came to me, whatever sent you to me, whether it was God or the devil, go and tell them that I now know what I'm going to do with you. I want to put your name on something. If the devil sent you to me, tell him that that's what I want to do. And he will respect me for that. Because at least he's a gentleman. Somehow, when he sees another gentleman, he behaves like one. You doubt what I'm telling you? Go and read how God and the devil are talking in the book of Job. They are not fighting. They are talking like gentlemen. That's my job for you. If it was a human being that sent you to me, tell them that I have a job that I want to do for you. It is to put your name on something. Mary and Vicky, make sure that you remind me to do a special teaching on 5G 
and a special teaching on I want to put your name on something. Because, because you are not leaving this earth only with your birth certificate and your name. <laughs> and only as a statistics on those who came and died. No. We are putting your name on something. And that's it. So you begin to think of what is the one thing that I'm going to put your name on. Because I have to. If you think that it would be because you gave money for us to put up a building, a chapel, or a, a, a cathedral, and I have your pictures, because I'll have pictures of people that will be plastered to the wall forever. But that's not just it. Because that's an inside thing. I want an outdoor thing. Where people will walk through a building and they will see a statue of Mary. I'm talking of our Mary. I'm not talking of Mary, the mother of Jesus. No. I'm talking of our own Mary. They will see your statue standing there, tall. And they will ask, and they will go and read what it says about yeah. you. Vicky, you hear me? I want your statue somewhere. Roslyn, you hear me? Yeah. Do it, do it, do it. Good. So now all of you can see that my mission is for those who, who want something. Not for people who just want to come and listen to me. Because the time will come that I will not allow you to be coming to listen to me. I will tell you, let's do this first before you can come and be listening to me. Let's, let's do the business first. That's how it's going to be. Because I don't want you to leave me and go and tell a bad story about me. How I'm this, how I'm that. Let what I put your name on become the judge against you or for you. I asked somebody who called me recently and was asking me for something and said, you have a pastor? Say yes. Did you go to your pastor to ask for it? Say yes. What did they tell you? Oh, they don't have money. I said, they have such a big church. He said, well, because of Corona, they are broke, so they didn't have no savings. He said, yes, yeah, they say that she, she, she emailed me the letter they wrote to her. Because they don't, they, they, they don't want to talk to her face to face. The church is broke. The big building is broke. Yeah. The church is broke. The big building is broke. While we are richer than they are. I am here in America. If I tell you how many people I'm sponsoring in medical school, out there, you will be like, whoa! You and the, this little group is not little group, my dear. Your church cannot help you at this time of Corona. No. They wrote her a letter, and that letter says that their church and their big building is broke. They don't have money. That's why some churches still want their people to come to church instead of their people doing social distance, distancing or whatever we call it. Tell me about it. Most of them are broke. Yeah, most of them are broke. That's why they are desperate to have you in church. I went to a conference of one, one famous televangelist who is a friend. And I sat there and I listened to him and he preached for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours and was wanting people to come and give a $10,000 seed. And I sat there. He finished, nobody stood up. Nobody went. I said, good. Good for he. Why? The motive for what is going on there is wrong. Mark my word. I want you to go and write it down in your journal. That even if I become a multi-billionaire tomorrow, those of you who started with me, you will still be with me. I will not change. But for those who didn't help me to bake the bread, well, the law of the little red right hand applies. <laughs> 
Mary and Vicky, write that down for me. I think I need to do a major, a major powerful key on the law of the little red hand. That's what I will call it. That's what I will title it. <laughs> okay. The law of the little red hand. I love it. Those those who did not help you have no right to to you or to your money. They have no right to it. In fact, if you get my money, my money will kill you. You think you think what I'm saying? I'm just saying you go and read what Paul says. Paul said, if somebody who hates you, who betrayed you, who is your enemy, decide to come to you to come and ask you for food, he said, feed feed that person. Because the idiot doesn't know that by, by him not having no shame, no guilty feeling to come to you to come and ask for something, that person doesn't know that whatever you are going to give to that person is hellfire you are pouring on that person. He said, it will be like what? Mary, tell me. It will be like a... A coal of fire. You are, you are actually... That person is coming to ask for death. And devils have no shame. And they want to come back to you. They will scandalize you. Oh, you went and had sex with another man. You went and had sex with another woman. You went and did this. You went and did that. And then they will want to come and sleep with you again after that. Are you serious? One woman recently called our ministry and this man accused her the baby wasn't her. This white girl. And the girl said, let's go and do it. And the man doesn't want to go. So I said, you know what the Jamaican said? The girl said, no. Say, He's a fufu man. He's a fufu man. <laughs> you have no business being with him. You say fool, fool man. Yeah. He's a wicked cow. <laughs> He's a bad pig. He came to come and dig, dig, dig what he did not sow. And God will punish every evil pig. <laughs> People like me because I'm straightforward, I'm blunt. <laughs> That's why people like people like Roslyn, grandmother Roslyn doesn't know what to do with me. Because I'm unique and she likes me. <laughs> yep. Yep, and everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. I saw one man coming to the TV to come and talk about well God gave him a vision of what is going to be happening in three months time. He didn't say that there's going to be corona or disease or sickness. He was saying something else than the people. Is it C B N yeah. Pat Robert Pat Rob, they are looking for to save faith. They are looking they are looking for something to hold on to, to show that they are doing something. They say, hey, he's a prophet. I just look at this man who is hungry and looking for food, fool, fool, fool man, looking for food, you know? That kind of man is coming to prophesy. I say, ta, 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 get out from here. You silly, wicked pig. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Elijah has not spoken. Neither Moses is you. Get out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> when when coronavirus was not even this serious, TB Joshua went and started telling them, God has told him this coronavirus, ah, it doesn't mean anything. It's going it will just vanish you know it will not kill many people I'm, I'm in charge of it look at how many people have died and the idiot is sitting down there looking like a, an old farmer from one of the villages it's coming to give you prophecy better people have not given you prophecies D.B. Joshua 
<laughs> God punish wicked pigs. <laughs> People are going to meet T.B. Joshua who has not find food for himself and find a place for, for himself and keep his mouth shut. Everybody is trying to be a prophet because of Corona. When New Year come, they all become prophets. <laughs> Go and be safe. Be safe. About 40 major hospitals in America are giving out, um, they are extracting, uh, is it the antibody or what is it, from those who have survived Corona? Plasma. So their plasma, those who have survived Corona, they are extracting their plasma from their body to put on people. When it will come to my area, if any of the major hospitals in Kansas are doing it, I will go and get it and see the reaction. There is no shot on earth that is for a well-being that I do not have inside my body. There's none. Why? Because I was born sick and God told me that my job is to stay alive and to do his job. <laughs> stay alive and do and do my job there are times I go in to go and pray there are times I go in to go and pray and God said to me go and check with your doctor and let him tell you what's wrong let him fix it I'm telling you the truth faith is not having faith is not enough there are things that you, you don't need faith you already got it but you're going to need your doctor go and see Every miracle worker that has come to this earth, whether they be of Hindus, Buddhists, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, rabbis, every one of them who ventured into the territory of miracles, go and see, all of them who lived the longest had a doctor, a primary doctor assigned to them. Go and look at it. Including all the stigmatics, including bad repute. Every one of them and Paul wasn't stupid. Paul can heal anybody he want. But Paul traveled with a medical doctor called... What was the name of Paul's doctor? What was the name of Paul's doctor that he traveled with throughout his life on the earth? Luke. Luke, the writer of Luke Gospel. That was Paul's primary physician. Did you guys know this? Okay. Thank you, sweetie. Rosalind knows it. And and Paul, Paul can perform any miracle he want. But he had a doctor to take care of him. Because there are things that are not affecting. They are a medicine thing. There are things that is not a prayer thing. You need a doctor to cut you up, get something out of you, put something in you, sew you back, and you go on. Alive for a long time. One boy that I went to uh, primary and um, high school with, he belonged to the Faith, is it the Faith Tabernacle Group? Their headquarters is in Philadelphia. Their leader, Charles Raynett, was a friend of mine, but he's now dead. I can tell you right now. All my friends who belong to that group, they've all died. Everyone who were my friend, who were the leaders of that church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, they are all dead. Why? Because they will not take medicine. They are practicing faith. That's why I tell people, don't become a member of Jehovah Witness. It's a deadly thing. Don't become a Mormon. It's a deadly thing. There are certain groups you should not join. For the sake of your life on earth, don't join certain groups. Because they will use doctrine and kill you. That boy was coming to school with me. He had a bruise. All they needed to do is rub a hydrogen peroxide or rub alcohol on it. He said, oh, no, no. The parents said, no, 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 no. Don't, don't ever apply any medicine to our son. We believe in faith. Oh, he said, I got it. You guys believe in faith? You don't believe in God. You believe in faith. Go ahead. 
Do you know that that thing become a, what we call inyon? Something begin to eat that wound. That wound begin to have blister and burst and smell. They have to tell the teacher asked him not to come back to this to the class because he's making the rest of us sick. Do you know they were they were they were putting clothes, they were wrapping clothes around it, and they will use hot water and press on it. That thing continued to expand until that boy's leg fell off and the boy died. We had another one who was an organist, our organist. He was also into this faith thing. He became diabetic. Simple thing that could have been taken care of. Tiny tablet for you to take. His was not even a major thing. He refused. He believed in faith. Because a lot of them who tell you they are faith practitioners, they believe in faith. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in God. It's a different thing about believing in faith and believing in Christ Jesus, our Redeemer. It's a different thing. Because Christ did not say that you should come to him with your head left at home. That organist died. There was a man that used to live with us. His name was Mwangwa uh, Osonga. He was into faith things. He's dead. I can count the numbers of people who are into faith things, including mighty, mighty miracle workers. They all died of simple sicknesses, simple virus, simple bacteria. They were dead. And that was the end of it. And I can see God tell an angel, to bring out the whip, the big whooping rod, and say, let them stand outside heaven, outside the gate. Abraham, don't give them no food, don't welcome them, because they are foolish. They are foolish, foolish, stupid, stupid, dot, net, dot, dot, org. Because that one is an organization, their foolishness is an organization, it's huge. It's net, it's global, dot, net. Kingdom. How old are you? 50. Can that person 50? That's what Tori told me. About the bear. We call it the law of administering justice to the bears. <laughs> How old are you? 20. And you died? And you allow yourself to die? Yes, sir. Turn around. Can him 20. Give him a VIP treatment. Very important persons whooping. Each of them, their body has to be whooped before they are allowed to enter into heaven. Because you've not finished your assignment. You did not enter into your destiny. You didn't enjoy life with all the enjoyment God kept for you. And by the time after they finish whooping their butt and they let them into heaven finally, the first place they will take them to is the television house. The television house is where they turn your video for you to watch what you could have done on earth. So Vicky and Mary, make sure you write it for me. Heaven's television house and what happens there. Because they are going to show you what you refuse to do. I'm talking to you about it now. Because you are going to go back to kindergarten when you reach heaven. You think that heaven is a place where you are going to sit down and sleep. Because that's what many of you, that's what the church song says. That you are going to rest. You are going to sleep. That song is wrong. There is no sleeping in heaven if you didn't know it. Spirits don't sleep. <laughs> You think you are going to heaven to go and rest? Oh, our parent has gone back to heaven to go and rest. There is no rest in heaven. You are really going to start your real job as a spirit being. If you didn't know it. I pity all of you who think you go to heaven. They have, they have painted your house for you. We smelling so good. It's a big mansion and you just go into Kopai. I pity you. I pity you. Because you are not going to see such a thing. You are going to get a whooping first. 
then you are going to the television house to watch you what you would have done and you refuse to do it then they are going to send you to a, a, a modern water house a hut h-u-t and they are going to feed you with rice and beans in fact they are going to feed you with bread and water i think that's the right thing beans is too good i'm going to appeal that they should not give you any beans because that's protein that's too good it should be bread and water and some bitter 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 aid bitter plant for you to chew with the bread so that you can remember next time because you are not coming back to the earth yours is done then after that you are going back to school what i'm telling you is the truth of what happened in heaven tell you you are just going to go and enjoy who tells you that you are not going to enjoy that you are going to start from kindergarten to study what you would have studied on earth to become what you would have become on earth that college you didn't want to go you're gonna go because it was part of your destiny that technical skill you didn't want to get you're gonna get it because it was part of your destiny you didn't want to become a lawyer a medical doctor a teacher engineer all this they're gonna show you your destiny and you're gonna start that is what happened Mary and Vicky are you write it down this is really what happened so if you were lied to by all the church song that you are going to rest and to enjoy and to shout hallelujah and dance and sing and worship God they are fooling you because that is not the heaven that I went that's not how it is I'm sorry focus and follow me focus and follow your life focus and follow Jesus and the Holy Ghost and God the Father they have a business for you the Almighty God bless you the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit both now and forevermore Amen Amen and Amen 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 Amen, amen.